Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night in the Word. I'm Pastor Rick Amendola here at New Life Christian Assembly of God, Haverhill, Massachusetts, on this beautiful summer Wednesday night, August the 3rd, 2022. And how are we doing tonight? Good to see you all these people on here. Uh, let me just go down the list and say hello, like is our custom. Jerry Ellis, God bless you. Jerry and Jeannie, good to see you on here. Uh, Jerry's sister Julie is on here. James Carter's on here. Hey, James, I'm just texting you. Uh, Jerry's other sister Jan is on here. How you doing, Jan? Uh, Kaylee Wheaton from Florida is on here. Hey, Kaylee. Uh, okay, James, uh, Julie, and uh, let's see, uh, Danica's on here, Lorinda's on here, good to see you, Lorinda, Tony Adams, good to see you, Signora Trambetta, this must be Cece, hi Cece, uh, okay, okay, all right, Julie, I see your little note there. And Malada, hey Malada, good to see you. All right, so hit your share button if you can. Try to get a few more people on here. Uh, I want to just thank everyone for the wonderful uh, anniversary uh, wishes we got on Sunday and Monday, and it it was really amazing. Uh, Facebook, all the different people that contacted us and wished us well and everything. In that case, Facebook was really a great blessing. <laughs> Know, so many people um, it was fun it was fun to see everyone I've been commenting in fact I was commenting on one of those pages today and there were so many comments that Facebook stopped me from making any more comments I couldn't do it anymore I had to wait and I then I got away from it so I've got to go back to it sometime later but uh, anyway uh, thank you for the anniversary wishes everyone loved our our, our photos from the wedding uh, which was 45 years ago, so, you know, 45 years does a job on you. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad we have some good pictures back from back then. Uh, also, then today, I posted a picture of my tomato plant, and um, it look, it's such a great picture. It's such a great picture, the blue sky in the background. The thing is, is just like you went on a little secret, uh, the... Uh, the plant is wonderful. I have the tomatoes are turning red. Uh, one of my kids gave it to me for my Father's Day gift this year. But um, it, in the picture, it looks like the plant's about ten feet tall. <laughs> but actually, I, put, I held the camera on the on the ground, so it's looking up at it to make it look like it's bigger. And then I I, I picked the tomato off of it and made a sandwich for lunch with the tomato and with some tuna salad that Pam made and some bread that Stacy made and put a hunk of cheese in there and uh, Catherine Stephanie okay hello there how are you <coughs> good to see you on here and uh, yeah so got a lot of a lot of remarks about that as well so anyway Facebook has been kind to us lately we appreciate all the feedback it's fun it was just a fun happy lighthearted type of thing all right uh, <laughs> Catherine, I, I thought it might have been you, Catherine Selucky, but I didn't know Catherine Stephanie. I'm trying to think, okay, do I know a Catherine Stephanie? But I guess that is a middle name, perhaps. But anyway, Catherine, you're on here. So good for you. Good to have you on here. Everyone should greet Catherine. She's, she's been a faithful follower, but not under the comments section. But uh, she's able to get on here tonight. Signed up. Okay, very good. There you go. So uh, everybody... Who, how, how many people are on here? I don't know. I see 11 people on here. Uh, so, listen, hit your share button. We have to get some more souls on here if we can. I know it's the middle of the summer, but you never know who may be surfing and trying to, you know, end up on our, on our Bible study tonight. All right. Thank you, Jan, for doing that. That's great. That's great. Okay, so a um, couple quick announcements, and then we're going to pray. But everyone should have gotten this email about our VBS, that's Vacation Bible School. It's a kids' ministry. It will be on August 17th through the 21st from 4 to 6 p.m. 
That's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, if you go to our, our website, <clears throat> um, let's see, how does this work? If you go to our website or if you go to the email I sent, <clears throat> you could click on a link to sign up your children and we would encourage you to do that so that we have a, a good estimate of how many kids will be coming. Uh, so please uh, take care of that. Spread the word. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, <clears throat> Caroline Gregan and Hannah Gregan for helping us out here. Doug as well with the kids ministry. They're doing a great job and I'm looking forward to that. Also, I want to say thank you to everyone uh, who's been praying with me early in the morning. You know what? 35 people have signed up for that right now. So um, I, I was talking to someone and, and they wanted to know if, um, if I wanted them to text me every morning to let me know that uh, you're praying with me. And I said, well, I don't think that would be good because I don't want to get all these texts when I'm trying to pray myself. But on, this, on, the, on the other hand, it might be good every now and then for somebody to text me early and say, hey, Pastor Rick, praying with you. Uh, just so I know that somebody out there is, is doing it. I mean, I, 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 I'm trusting everyone to do it, but it's good to hear, you know, good to hear from time to time that someone's out there. Hey, Millie Cobbett, I got you on the list, Millie. We're going to pray in just a second. Millie has some serious back pain. I think, Millie, like you said, you overdid it one day. And uh, now, you're, now you're suffering from it. Hope your chiropractor appointment went well today. <coughs> and uh, special thanks to Doug Gregan, <coughs> who took care of last Wednesday while Pamela and I were away. Um, <coughs> excuse me, celebrating our anniversary. And uh, there will be... I'll be sending out another email this week, actually, regarding our schedule in, October, in, in August, uh, because my mother, who is in Rhine, New York, uh, needs some attention. So uh, Pamela and I will be taking some time away from here, from Wednesday nights, uh, to be down in New York with her. Um, she's 95, and uh, everyone else in the family is away, so we're going to try to fill in the gap. Uh, so I'll send you all an email with, with our schedule. We're going to miss one Sunday. Uh, that will be the second Sunday in August. <coughs> I think the date would be the 10th. I think that's right. Um, no, that's, that can't be right. The date would be the 14th. Uh, Pastor Wayne Zanke will be preaching that day. We'll be back the following Sunday. We'll be here the Sunday before that, which is this Sunday. Okay, so anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer if we can. Got 13 people on here. Okay, we're getting there. And uh, okay, it's good to see everyone on here. I think I said hello to everyone, I believe. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, thank you for this uh, Wednesday night Bible study. We just pray, Lord, your blessing upon our time together. We welcome your Holy Spirit to teach us, to um, show us things and, and, and lead us in the direction where you want us to go, uh, areas that are important for us to talk about tonight. Thank you for everyone on here. Uh, may the study be helpful, and uh, may, your, may your presence be obvious, even, even though we're on a live, a live stream. Let your presence be obvious. We do want to pray, Lord, for our brother Aaron Evans' healing of Crohn's disease. It's debilitating, Lord God. Help him in the name of Jesus. For Katie Smigelski, also her stomach issues, Lord, it's debilitating for her. She's just so sick, so sick. We, we thank you, Lord, for both Aaron and Katie that are getting medical care, but it's not working well. They need your touch, oh God. We pray for Adrian and Greg and Scott and Debbie and Josiah uh, that are all dealing with cancer. We pray for healing of cancer in the name of Jesus. We pray for Joanne Feldman tonight, Lord, uh, that's dealing with physical problems, mental health issues, legal issues. We just call upon your name, Lord. Bless her, take care of her. Send people her way that could really be of help to her uh, in her time of need. And Lord, we also want to pray for Millie Cobbett tonight for this uh, back pain 
<coughs> and the and the difficulty it's caused her uh, not to be able to move and to be in so much pain. It's been debilitating for her. We pray for your healing hand to be upon her in a special way during these days. We also want to pray, Lord, for uh, for Crystal and her father who has Crohn's disease. We pray for healing for that as well. So thank you, Lord. We, we surrender this time to you now, and we pray for your perfect will to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, Dolores, good to see you. Okay, I'm just going to do something real quick here. You can take out your Bible and turn with me to, anyone know where we are? 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to finish that up and get into chapter 2 t tonight. So we were doing this uh, two weeks ago. Last week, Brother Gregan was here. Okay, just one second, everybody. Okay. Hey, Pamela, good to see you here. Glad you made it. Okay, so uh, I want to finish up chapter one. So two weeks ago, we got as far as uh, verse number 23. And uh, just to give you a quick, quick, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but the first verses, uh, let's say verse uh, one through 18, have to do with what I would call Hannah's sorrow and Hannah being misunderstood. Um, she was not able to get pregnant. In verse 6, it says that the Lord closed her womb. It caused a problem with her and the other wife of her husband, uh, Penina. <clears throat> and they were both married to Alkina. And uh, she was very distraught. Anyway, we got to, to verse number 19 and uh, verse number 20. Where, where the baby was actually born, hallelujah. Um, and then we looked at verse number 21, where, where we talked about Elkanah's uh, character. His, um, his morals were good. Uh, he was getting ready to go to the yearly sacrifice again. Okay, thank you, James Carter. Uh, and uh, let's see, verse 22 is where we were kind of winding it up. But Hannah didn't go. Hannah and the baby did not go to the feast. Uh, women were not required to go. Uh, so she stayed back until the baby was weaned. And uh, keep in, the, in mind that in the back of her mind, I'm sure she's thinking that in verse 11 of chapter 1, she made a vow to the Lord. If, if the Lord would bless her with the baby... So, so some time went by, probably a year went by. We figure nine months of the pregnancy uh, and some other months too. Um, so at least a year went by. And now she has the baby. And now she's thinking, hey, Brian Kanicki, good to see you, man. God bless you. Uh, thanks for the happy anniversary wishes, Brian. Um, and now she's in her mind, she's thinking, I, I, I have the baby, and I'm going to have to give him up to the Lord. You know, the Nazarite vow and all that from the very beginning of the, this baby's life. So anyway, so she, she wasn't in a big, big, big hurry, but she didn't want to, you know, wait until the baby was weaned. So the question is, when is a, when is a baby weaned? Hey, Ellie, Eliana, Lindsay, good to see you here tonight. Better late than never, Ellie. God bless you. Glad you made it. Um, if you see Sierra, tell her we said hello, too. Anyway, so we're in 1 Samuel 1. Uh, so now, now Hannah is, you know, has the baby, and she, she's going to wean the baby. So let's see, verse 22, 23. Uh, okay. Verse 23 is important. Uh, Elkanah said, uh, her husband said to her, do what seems best to you. This is a good man right here. 
Uh, wait until you have weaned him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Two things here in verse 23. I think Elkanah was encouraging his wife to remember the vow. You know, let the Lord establish his word. In other words, okay, I'm with you in this, Hannah. I mean, it was his baby too, you know. Um, but I'm with you in this. Let the Lord establish his word. Uh, verse number 17, the priest Eli was in agreement with the prayer as well. Um, well, he said, let your petition, uh, which you have asked, let it be done. Uh, so I think the husband was at this point saying, okay, I'm going to the feast. Uh, you stay here. You wean the baby. Just let the, let, the, uh, let the Lord establish his word. In other words, let the, let the agreement be confirmed that we're going to do this. And I think that was an encouragement to Hannah to go ahead and, and to go ahead with the plan. Verse 24, when she had weaned him, uh, she took up, she took him up with her to the feast. So right there, I would say, I would say that both husband and wife are, are displaying their integrity, their their nobleness, if that's the way to say it. In other words, they're displaying their faith in God. They're staying true to their word. And uh, this is very, very important. Elkanah did it. He continues go to go to the feast, encouraging his wife to make good with the vow. Hannah now, um, when she... Now, so what? the question is, when, when was the baby weaned? Uh, I think in that culture, it was fairly normal to wean your baby like at age three maybe age four long, you know older than what's customary in our culture so she probably had him you know a while um it's not really clear right here although if you look over in um in verse number 28 she left the baby there without the, the child there in verse number 11 the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. So the parent, apparently the, the child had to be old enough to do something in the temple. So a little, a little child could do things like a four-year-old, maybe three might be pushing it, but, three, but four or five could be doing little things. In verse number 18 of chapter 2, I'm sorry, that was chapter 2, verse 11. In chapter 2, verse 18, uh, the child was wearing a linen ephod, ephod which, which was a worship outfit. So at that point, the child was obviously older. But at this point, <coughs> excuse me, we're not really sure how old. But anyway, my guess is at least three or four. I'd say I'm maybe more, leaning more towards four. But anyway, be that as it may. Verse number 24. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. So the child, now, now it's not a baby, so you get the idea, maybe four, maybe five, out of somewhere around there. Uh, hey, Brother Jesus. Oh man, you got canceled. You must be at the airport. We're going to say a prayer for you right now, brother. Let's pray, for, let's pray for our brother Jesus. He's in Chicago, had a great conference out there. He's getting ready to come back. His flight was canceled until 11 o'clock tonight, which throws everything off. <laughs> He's got to wait, get in early in the morning. Someone's going to pick him up, just the whole... Okay, let's pray. Let's pray for our brother. Uh, hey, Johnny Brenz, God bless you, man. Good to see you. Father, we lift up our brother Jesus right now, Lord, as he's waiting in the airport. Thank you that he got out there to Chicago. Thank you that his conference went really well. And uh, Lord, we pray for a safe uh, flight back to, to Boston <clears throat> and then a safe ride over to Haverhill tonight or early morning. <clears throat> Lord, comfort, comfort our brother. Uh, let it not be a point of anxiety or anxiousness. Uh, 11 p.m. flight is late. He'll be getting in early in the morning. But we pray for his transportation to all hook up properly and just give him your peace and let him get home safely, and we thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> All right. 
Hey, David Newfell, good to see you. I missed you. Hey, Sandy Whitney. Oh, Donna Susie. I missed a few people. All right. <clears throat> All right, so is everyone following me? I feel like I'm a little scatterbrained tonight. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask everybody? Uh, just a little detour right here. Um, Sunday's message. I realized, I was thinking about that message all Sunday and Monday, and I was feeling like a little uneasy about it, and I realized today, in all my years of being a pastor, and I started pastoring as an associate or an assistant pastor in 1987 or 86, 86. Uh, senior pastor since 1993. I have never preached a message on friendship. And that's why it felt so different for me. It was like a new subject to be preaching on. I, I just wondered how everyone uh, liked that message, if it made sense to you, if, if it's something you're thinking about, the value of a friend. Uh, I think I think we could have a conversation about that, you know? Uh, might be a good topic one of these Wednesday nights, but just to develop friendships and to, and to value friendships. God uses friendships <coughs> to teach us, to encourage us, to, you know, to shape us and so forth. <coughs> so anyway, if you have any feedback on that, I would appreciate it at some point. Uh, you can put it here, text me or whatever. Okay, back in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, so verse 24, she, uh, she did what she said she was going to do. She was bringing him to the temple. She brought the offering with her. Now, doesn't say how all that happened. She may have had a little entourage with her, but three bulls, uh, some scholars think one was for a thank offering, one was for a sin offering, and one was for a peace offering. Some scholars think in addition to that, one of the bulls may have been uh, in regards to the baby being born, Samuel, and the other two maybe just for the regular sacrifices that they would do at that particular event anyway. And then the other things, the, uh, the ephah, a flower, a skin of wine, um, <clears throat> those are all things that they use for the sacrifice. And so she was going to the temple ready to worship. Case in point, Sunday morning service begins on Saturday night. Can I get an amen? Um, in other words, we, we, we come to the Lord with something. Uh, oh, thank you, Pamela. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, <laughs> thank you, James, for that. Okay, Jan loved the message, loved it as part of what made me sign up. Ah, very good. All right. Yeah, see that, James? We're in the same boat. That's the first time I heard a message on friendship, and I'm the one who gave it. Uh, oh, David Newfell, you got friends up here, man. All right, Catherine. We're with you in spirit, David. We're with you in spirit. We'll connect soon. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, verse 24, uh, Hannah came ready to worship God. She brought the offerings. Now, we don't bring bulls, we don't bring flour, we don't bring a, a skin of wine, we bring a heart of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the LOL, and Pamela. <laughs> uh, um, so we, yeah, so come to church ready to give God your best. Give him your praise. I always say, there's nowhere in the scripture does it say that you have to be a good singer to worship the Lord. It just says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And sometimes it sounds like noise. But be that as it may, lift your voice to the Lord. Clap your hands to the Lord. Do a dance before the Lord. Give him honor. Give him glory. Give him praise. And, and bring an offering to the Lord. You know, bring, bring your heart to the Lord. So this is what Hannah did. Keeping in mind, she's going to have to leave her, her boy there. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they, they brought the child to Eli. So here we go. Now Eli's getting involved. And, and the, the priest is crucial to the story because where was she going to leave the boy? And she had to leave him with the priest who was in charge of the temple. So she said, oh, my Lord, which is a way to greet someone of prestige. <laughs> Jesus, 
Well, Jesus, you know, make a joyful noise, brother. Uh, okay, so anyway. Uh, oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord. Uh, so now she's reiterating something. I'm the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. If you go back to chapter 1 and verse 17, remember Eli was looking at her thinking she was drunk. And she's saying, no, I, I, now a year went by, you know, at least a year. Oh, yeah, I guess it was a year. A year goes by, she's, she's, and she says, she says, oh, Lord, or priest, uh, I'm the woman that was praying to the Lord. And uh, this is the child I prayed for, verse 27. And the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. <clears throat> Going back to verse 11, <clears throat> Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. And, and sure enough, the Lord did that. Now she's got to do that. So verse 28, Therefore, because I asked the Lord to do something and made a vow with him, I told the Lord, if you give me a baby boy, I will raise this child with the, the Nazarite vow. And, <clears throat> and I, will, I will leave him here you know, with the priest. So therefore, I have, I have lent him to the Lord, or I have given him to the Lord. An act of baby dedication maybe a little bit more serious than baby dedication. As long as he lives, he shall be lent or given or granted unto the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. Let me just highlight uh, the word worship. They, they worship the Lord there in this act of dedication, this act of surrender, this act of fulfilling a vow and starting the new vow of the Nazarite vow for their, for their child. Uh, but worship was, was an integral part of the whole thing, <clears throat> which is why we've kind of determined <clears throat> that every time we get together in a public service, we, we worship the Lord. In fact, I used to play a song every now and then on this live stream, but um, haven't been doing that. But um, when we get together in person, we always worship the Lord. We always have a time of worship. If you look back, uh, let's see. In verse number 3 of chapter 1, they would go to Shiloh every year to worship. And then in verse number, uh, where am I here? Verse number 19, uh, they rose up early in the morning, they worshiped before the Lord, and then they returned home. So worship was a part of their, you know, a part of their life. Uh, it was integrated into their lifestyle. <clears throat> we like to say that our worship times are, are formal in the sense that we worship together, as in, uh, <clears throat> as in corporate worship, but also we worship independently with um, a lifestyle of worship. I mean, we worship the Lord when we don't indulge in things of the world, when we don't indulge in things of the flesh, when we say no to certain things and yes to other things. That's, how, that's our act of worship before the Lord. It's not always singing. It's sometimes it's doing the right thing. Okay, so that's chapter one. So in that, in that background, in that setting, so chapter one, we don't know how many years are involved because year by year they go up to this feast, year by year. One year, the priest noticed her and they had a conversation. He agreed with her in prayer. And uh, she got pregnant, and she had the baby. So that, that would take nine months. So we don't know how many years that went on, but one year she, the Lord responded and, and opened her womb, and she became pregnant, and uh, she had the baby. So we don't know how many years, but it was at least one year from the last time they were there. And like I said, she had to have time to wean the child. So several years <clears throat> after the baby was born had to, had to have gone by too. So chapter 2 begins what's called Hannah's prophetic prayer. Now Hannah's prophetic prayer is uh, the first 10 verses of, of chapter 2. If you don't know, there's a parallel story in the New Testament that kind of fits in with the story of Hannah and Samuel. Uh, it's the story of Mary. Now, there, there are some similarities and there are some differences, but it, it's worth talking about. Um, 
if you, we were to go to um, Luke chapter 2, I won't turn to it, I'll just, I'll just talk it out right here. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 21. After Jesus was born, uh, after eight days, Joseph and Mary had the child circumcised. I think the father did that. I'm not positive, but I think the father did that. Then after 40 days of pure, it's called after the days of purification. So that was 40 days. So 40 days, I guess, after the eight days, or maybe the eight days were included in the 40, not really sure. But after 40 days of purification, there was the dedication. So at that point, they had to go from Bethlehem into Jerusalem <clears throat> to dedicate the baby unto the Lord, <clears throat> unto the Father. And there were different sacrifices. This is the parallel. Hannah brought in three bulls and other stuff. <clears throat> Joseph and Mary brought... Uh, uh, I know there were two turtle doves, but what was the first part? <clears throat> they... Uh, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. <clears throat> and if anyone brought a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons, instead of bulls and goats and all the poorer class of people, so there are different offerings that the Jews would, would bring based upon their economic level. So Joseph and Mary were at the lower end. Hannah apparently was on, on a higher end, it seems like. But they dedicated the baby, and in that setting they met Simeon, who had a prophetic word for Mary and held Jesus up and prayed over him. <clears throat> and then right after that, they ran into Anna, the prophetess, who also had a prophetic word. Um, so now when we get into Hannah's prayer, the parallel is in Luke chapter 1. We call it the Magnificat. When, when Mary began to give thanks, well, the difference is that Hannah's prayer or Hannah's song came after the baby was born. Mary's song came before the baby was born. She was pregnant. But remember, she, she said, Oh, my soul doth, doth magnify the Lord who has done great things for me. <clears throat> Every generation will call me blessed. Uh, he has done great things. And, <clears throat> you know, he, he, they, and they, were, they both have a prophetic <clears throat> tone to them. Um, so, so scholars... And people that, that love this often compare the song of Hannah with the song of Mary. Both were, both were childless before, uh, both um, conceived in miraculous ways, although Hannah's birth was, uh, was through normal means, but the Lord had closed her womb, then the Lord opened her womb, so that was a miracle. <clears throat> but for Mary, of course, it was a supernatural a pregnancy by the Holy Spirit. Uh, which is a once in a life, once in a historical moment that that would ever happen. <clears throat> <clears throat> so anyway, um, so verse, so chapter one uh, concludes by saying, "Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be granted to the Lord." So they worship the Lord there. I just want you to get the. The pathos here, pa the patho pathos. Remember when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday? I always refer to this. The, the pathos, is that the way you say it? Pamela, help me. In other words, people are saying, hallelujah, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they're all, you know, joyful and waving palm branches. And Jesus is stoically sitting on a donkey, sad, and he begins to cry. The contrast is like uh, the contrast is disturbing, you know. And you could you could see through the whole scenario that Jesus was coming into the city because he knew he was going to die, and yet everyone else is having a party, and it was just uh, a, a, such a contrast. This is similar to what's happening with Hannah. Now, let's say for the sake of argument that Samuel was now four. That's old enough to be totally attached to, to mom and mom attached to the child. But she's going to keep her vow. She's going to do it. And the first thing they did was they worshiped the Lord. 
you know, you have to get that now. Just like David, when David and Bathsheba had a baby, the baby died. And what does it say? Daniel washed himself up, changed his clothes, went into the temple to worship the Lord. I mean, they stubbed their foot in the morning. You know, people stay home from church because whatever. It's too hot. Too hot to go outside. Hello? Uh, but in, in the Bible, <laughs> you, you hear these stories. People run to the temple. They run to worship God in the middle of their most sorrowful moments in life. They, they, they get into the presence of God with other people to boot. So anyway, this is, this is where Hannah's at now. She, she's worshiping. She's going to leave her son there. And so chapter 2 begins. Hannah prayed, and this is what she said. My heart rejoices in the Lord. To me, that's, that's miraculous that she could come to that place and say that. Notice that she says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. You could read into it and say, my heart does not rejoice in my flesh or in my sorrow, in the fact that I, I have to make good on this vow I made to the Lord, but I'm going to do it. It's the right thing to do, but I'm, I'm sad. I mean, I'm, I'm happy I'm doing it. It's the right thing. I know God will bless me and everything else, but that's my son. But my heart rejoices in the Lord. This is a step of faith. And this is something we all need to grab hold of. We need to recognize the fact that, oh, whatever bad thing is going on, whatever. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I won't rejoice in the bad situation. I, I, I just thought of something. Someone, someone, uh, when Pamela, Pamela broke her, uh, It was her shoulder. There was something broken in her shoulder, her arm. And uh, someone at church said, it's, it's a blessing from the Lord. It did not bear witness with me at all. Let me, it did not bear witness with me. The rejoicing came in the Lord, not in the fact that she was hurt. There's no rejoicing in the fact when someone's in pain. There's no rejoicing in that. The rejoicing is that in spite of that, the Lord is involved in it somehow. The Lord will take care of her. So, so anyway, Hannah's rejoice. My heart rejoices in the Lord, and, and and my horn or my strength, according to the footnote, my strength is exalted in the Lord. Right, Sandy. A couple of years ago. That's right. Uh, so my heart rejoices in the Lord. My heart is exalted, or my horn is exalted in the Lord. I'm not strengthened by thinking about it. I'm not strengthened by trying to be logical or smart. No, I, I'm, I'm exalted. I'm strengthened. I'm blessed because I know that my heart is in the Lord. My faith is in the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. And uh, in, this, in this setting, uh, Hannah, she says, uh, I smile at my enemies. Oh, come on now. Because I rejoice in your salvation. What's she talking about? Remember Panina? Look at chapter 1. Look at verse number 3. Whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Panina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, Panina, provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year, year by year, year after year. She's got kids. Hannah doesn't have kids. She provokes Hannah. She makes Hannah miserable. Hannah feels terrible year after year after year. Um, she provoked her. Therefore, Hannah wept and she didn't eat. So now, now Hannah's praying. She's got the baby, or the, the little, little baby boy now. I smile at my enemies. Come on now, this has to talk to somebody. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. You could tell Hannah is strengthened right now. She's about to do something drastic, leave her son there. And the way it was back then... Uh, right, she, she was... I was just going to say, uh, Julie... The, the custom was that every year she would see the boy when she went back up to the, 
up to the Shiloh feast, up to the temple to, to, to worship. Uh, but the boy didn't, wasn't going to live with her anymore. Uh, she was giving him to the Lord. That, that, that was the arrangement she made. And he lives with the priest. Uh, so anyway, I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. Can we just talk about salvation for a minute? I always said that when we come to Christ and we're saved, we're genuinely, hallelujah, born again, as in John 3, 3 and 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Uh, everything's different. We process different. We think different. We react different. We, we, everything's tempered by the Holy Spirit. Now Hannah can smile at her enemies because she's rejoicing in the salvation of the Lord. My heart is good. My heart is clean. Uh, my strength is exalted in, in the Lord. I smile at my... My enemies have no power over me. Maybe before Penina had power over Hannah. She, she did, obviously. She would provoke her. Hannah was, felt terrible. She wept all the time. It was a terrible situation. But Penina... You know, really shame on her for doing that. But um, to Hannah's credit, though, on the other hand, she never retaliated. She never had an argument. Which, you know, it doesn't say what she did. She just kind of sucked it up and, and, and took it upon herself. But now, some years after the, you know, she's got the victory, she's smiling at her enemies. And she's rejoicing in, in, in the Lord's salvation. So my point is, how are you and I... <coughs> Uh, applying our salvation to these types of situations. It's, this is a tough situation. Hannah's giving the child up, and, and, and there's still Penina somewhere in the background, but her heart is rejoicing in the Lord. Her strength is in the Lord. She's smiling at her enemies because of the salvation of the Lord. See, that having salvation, it truly is our salvation. I mean, when you think about it, like, like the principle is, okay, we're sa what are we saved from, first of all? What, what, what is salvation? <clears throat> we're, we're saved from God's wrath, number one. We're saved from hell, and, and we're saved from, from demonic activities. But we're also saved from ourself. We're saved from our old nature. So with a new nature, and yes, it has to be fed and nurtured and developed and all that but like hannah hey my heart's re i'm in a difficult spot here i gotta give up my baby i gotta deal with panina but you know what i'm on top of this situation i, I love this analogy I, and, and that's that's our goal in life isn't it as, as what's the saying when life gives us a a, a lemon make lemonade when, when, uh, when life throws us a curveball, uh, step back and just give it all your best shot and hit a grand slam. But uh, when life is hard, I heard, a, I heard a devotional this morning, as a matter of fact. I have a little Bible app, and, and this brother was from India. What a great study. I forget the verse it was. Uh, I could find it real quick. But anyway, he was saying, um, in the Lord... Let's see if I can get this real quick. Now, oh, John 16, 33. These things I've spoken to you. Yeah, Jesus said, these things I've spoken to you, that in the world you're going to have tribulation. But lo, or hey, catch this, I've overcome the world. So when you put your faith and trust in God, there will be troubles, but the troubles aren't like they were before without Christ. The troubles are going to come. Hey, we all have them. But God is with us, and we can rejoice that whatever comes our way, I'm still standing. Whatever comes our way, I am still standing. Not in my strength, but in the strength of the Lord. Yes, Donna, I, I, I know that. Smiling, not smirk. <laughs> That's right, uh, James Carter. Don't smirk at your enemies now. You can smile. Everything's okay. Yeah. Okay, as we go along with this prayer, some of those things are addressed. Okay, so anyway, 
so so far with Hannah, there's a lot to, a lot about Hannah. Uh, she called upon the Lord in the middle of her conflict before the baby was born. And now she's calling upon the Lord after the baby was born and when the, she's getting ready to give the baby up. Point being, pray. <laughs> pray in the, in the conflict, before the conflict, after the conflict. Stay in prayer. That's why our early morning prayer is so, so valuable and so important. We've got to be a people of prayer every day, every day. If you can, every morning. Uh, if you missed it, we're, 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 ha we're asking people to pray with us every morning on your own. Everyone's on your own. But just make a conscious effort every single day to pray to God. Build an altar like Stacy's message. Build an altar. Experience uh, renewing of the mind. Rhythms of renewal in the mind every day. And engage in, in the supernatural. Absolutely. That was a great message. I love it. I shared it on Tuesday Talk this week. But um, we're, we're looking for people just to say, Pastor Rick, I'm going to pray with you. You know, you won't see me, but I'm going to be praying with you. And uh, so anyway, Hannah was praying before the conflict and after the conflict. And she, she prayed uh, sacrificially. Now Psalm 116 talks about, I will bring a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. I will bless you and bring a sacrifice of praise. What's a sacrifice of praise? David said that. He said, oh Lord, uh, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of praise and I will call upon the name of the Lord. That's Psalm 116, 16 and 17. What's a sacrifice of praise? It's, it's a praise when you don't feel like it. It's a praise when you know you, sh you should and you, and you must, but, but also when you feel like, I don't know if I wanna do this, I don't feel like it, but I'm gonna sacrificially give it to the Lord in spite of my tears. Hannah was sorrowful here. In spite of my sorrow, in spite of, in spite of my grief, in spite of whatever's going on, I'm going to make time to give you praise. Man, that's a powerful statement right there. Uh, okay, when life gets hard, better days are coming. Yeah, that's right. We got to sing that song again soon. I'll stand. Is that called uh, The Stand? I think, yeah. Okay, pray without ceasing. Thank you, Jerry. Gene says amen. Hey, Gene Eaton. Christine Ireland. Barnum, good to see you. Uh, pray always in the valley, on the mountaintops. Think of Abraham with Isaac. Better believe Abraham. Prayed even on the mountaintop. That's right. Praise God in the ups and downs. Yep, that's it. And then Hannah also kept her vow. We talked about this. How many times do we say to the Lord, Lord, if you do this, I promise you, I'll do that. I'll do this. And then he does that, and then we don't do that. Hey, Tammy Bracewell. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned. That's the song. How you doing, Tammy? Good to see you. So, yeah, so... Um, and then the other thing about Hannah was that she was blessed, you know, after this was all over. Uh... Tammy, I got gotcha. you. That spell check gets you every time. But Hannah ended up getting ha having three more sons, two more daughters. Uh, chapter two, verse twenty-one. So Hannah, the Lord really did bless her and take care of her in a very special way. Okay, let's let's go on with Hannah's prayer. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna start this again. Let's see how far we could get. Hannah prayed and said this, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn or my strength is exalted in the Lord. Point being, stay in the Lord. Stay in Christ. I smile at my enemies. I don't smirk. I smile because I rejoice in your salvation. I've got peace in the midst of the storm. <clears throat> no one is holy like the Lord, <clears throat> for there is none besides you nor is there any rock like our God. Uh, oh, very good, 23 people. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the word rock there kind of stands out to me. Um, 
Can we go to Psalm 61 for a minute? Psalm 61 is a great hymn, a great psalm. <coughs> this is what it says. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. You have to picture this now. He's feeling like he's at the end of the earth. Far away from everybody, even maybe even far away from God. But he says, hear my cry, or listen to my prayer. Even when I'm at the end of the earth, I'm going to cry out to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Selah. <clears throat> uh, let me read some New Testament scriptures real quick. Romans 9.33 says this. <clears throat> As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. The rock is Jesus. Hey, Eddie Long, down in Reesville, North Carolina. God bless you, brother. Good to see you tonight. And here's another scripture about the rock. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock, with a capital R, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Hey, Joyce, glad you could join us tonight. So Hannah's saying in chapter 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, uh, verse 2, Nor is there any rock like our God. Here's a little, little play on words here that uh, supporting the deity of Christ. Jesus is the rock, and Jesus is the rock is God. So Jesus is God. <coughs> um, Sandy, it's a good question. You know, we have to go back to how we were before we were we were saved. I mean, I was 26 when I got saved, and I I, I went through a lot of stuff. It wasn't easy. It was terrible, but I mean, people without the Lord, they get some, they get through. Alinda is watching from Michigan. Hello, everyone. <coughs> I missed the online stream. Well, <coughs> Alinda, good to see you. How, how's your mom out there? I know you're visiting with her. Uh, we've been keeping you all in prayer. Good to have you on here tonight. All right. Anyway, now verse number three. Is an interesting thing. I don't think I've ever done this personally, uh, but sometimes when people pray, they're praying to the Lord, and all of a sudden they're they're praying, they're they're speaking to somebody, and then they go back to praying to the Lord again. You ever you ever hear that? Maybe some of you do that. Well, Hannah is doing that in this. She said, you know, verses 1 and 2, it's definitely to the Lord. You know, there's no one like the Lord, you know. <clears throat> but verse number 3, she's talking to somebody. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. <clears throat> For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. That's like, you know, praying to God. You know, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted. I smile at enemies. I rejoice in your salvation. I'm speaking to you, Lord. But now I'm saying, you know what? To somebody, and I, I have a feeling um, <clears throat> Hannah is, is making reference to Penina. I mean, how, how, what, what else could we, you know, ascertain here? Um, Penina was talking proudly. She provoked Hannah in chapter 1. She was arrogant. <clears throat> but, but Hannah is speaking to her in the prayer which I find an interesting mix. Um. <clears throat> uh. 
Okay, Jerry was born in Michigan. Uh, Linda, yeah, I, I know she, your mom has been in the hospital. Uh, Joyce is happy she's not who she, amen to that. I second that motion. Uh, James Carter, uh, isn't that when the fisherman got scared, screaming, so it's a, okay, that's between you and James, okay. Oh, think about the fisherman. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, anyway, talk no, no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Um, here's a paraphrase. You know, if, you, if you're going to talk to somebody, get humble. Humility is always best. And God knows who's humble and who's proud. That's how the verse ends. The Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So the Lord knows your heart. Um, the Lord knows your actions. He knows your thoughts. He knows who's proud and who's humble. And sometimes someone looks humble, but they're really proud. And sometimes people look really proud, but they're really, really very humble. <clears throat> hey, Patty Stauffer. Oh, thank you for saying that, uh, Patty. You spoke about friendship at a sisterhood meeting last year or the year before, and another one in 2009. All right, very good. I'm glad you enjoyed the message. I appreciate that. All right. Um, let's just, well, we have two minutes. I'm going to read some scriptures real quick. James 4, 6. James 4, 6 says, <clears throat> God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5, 4 says this. 1 Peter 5, I'm, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, <coughs> All of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God <coughs> resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Philippians 2, uh, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who didn't think it to be a problem to be equal to God, but he... He left glory. He humbled himself and came to earth and lived among us and shed his life as a, as a sacrifice um, whom God the Father has now exalted and, and raised up. But anyway, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. Jesus is, our, is the ultimate example <clears throat> of someone who's humble. Think about it. Born in Bethlehem mocked, ridiculed, unaccepted by his, <clears throat> even by his family at first, by his peers, <clears throat> by his townspeople, by the Jewish people, un 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 unloved, unaccepted, um, arrested, beaten, <clears throat> tortured, tried unjustly, led out to crucifixion, <clears throat> brutally murdered on a cross. Never once did he get mad, never once did he retaliate, <clears throat> Never once did he say he was going to get even. That's our example of humility. Born in, from heavens, from the glory of heaven. Think of all the things you read about, about heaven. Streets of gold and all that. <clears throat> People who have died and went there and came back to life and talked about what heaven was like. What we read about in Revelation and different passages, even in Daniel. <clears throat> about what heaven looks like is glorious. It's just he left heaven and came to Bethlehem to be born in his in a stable. Come on. <clears throat> this is from glory to humility. He humbled himself, came to earth. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So anyway, in Hannah's prayer, I had to stop here at verse number three. She's, she's re recognizing <coughs> the value of humility. And, and I, think, I think we could say that Hannah displayed humility through this whole ordeal. She never got mad at God. She never got mad at Penina. She never got mad at anybody. She just poured her heart out to God, uh, tearfully, you know, crying out to God. 
and now she's giving thanks to God. And she's just, she's just bringing out the point that God knows who's humble and God knows who's prideful. And um, we would do well to get humble before God. And you know what? Most of the time, our, our humility before God, talking about friendship, is displayed in our humility to one another. You know, we can't be really humble towards God if we're not humble to each other. So I would say, you know what? I mean, there's a, there's a part of this that has to do with church leadership, being, being humble to accept church leadership. There's a part of this of being humble regarding friendships, of loving people where they're at, instead of being judgmental and thinking you have the upper hand because for whatever reason. But just be humble <clears throat> and um, turn the other cheek. And let God use you <clears throat> to be a voice of reason and peace and understanding instead of a voice of judgmentalism, which Hannah could have done, but she didn't. Anyway, that's, that's, that's verses 1, 2, and 3 of Hannah's prayer. We'll continue on next time. Now, next Wednesday, I may be out of town, and, and Doug Reagan will be here. But when I do come back, we'll get back into Hannah's prayer. So you can check it out before then. Okay, we're going to close out in prayer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, James, I don't know, man. The fan's going. It's hot in here. <clears throat> it's like moldy. I think that's what it is. I, I could use a little honey. I love honey anyway, even when I don't cough. Anyway, I'm going to pray. Let's pray. Can we pray for just a second, everybody? <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for the, the lesson from Hannah tonight. I pray, Lord, it was helpful for us. Let us have a good rest of the evening. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, for anyone that's sick or troubled to find peace and healing. We pray for our brother David Newfell out in Springfield area. Lord, just comfort him. Give him some friends out there. Let, let your Holy Spirit really minister to him tonight. Let him stay on track with his classes and let him continue to do well in his schooling. We pray for his transportation to be good. Lord, we give all this to you and uh, help us to apply the, the principles we learned from Hannah. Help us to apply those things in our lives. And Lord, thank you for the 35 people that are praying with me every morning. May that continue, and may we see the results of our prayers in our personal lives and in the life of our church as well. So we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the thanks and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for being on here. I'm going to put on some music for a minute if you want to write anything, but we'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.